Hello all. Welcome to Tech Horizon Hub. In this detailed video tutorial, we will explore everything we need to know and understand about hosted control planes on IBM Storage Fusion using Global Data Platform. Let's get started with Global Data Platform on IBM Storage Fusion. Install GDPP service, configure storage, run sample workload. Logging into IBM Storage Fusion. This is Bare Metal IBM Storage Fusion HCI cluster. OpenShift version 4.12. IBM Storage Fusion Operator version 2.7.1 is already installed on this cluster. We are doing some basic checks like if any storage classes already exists and all nodes in the cluster are healthy. Initially we see a 3 node cluster. Now let's go to IBM Storage Fusion user interface to configure global data platform. Go to service page. Click on global data platform tile. It expects to have minimum 6 nodes in the cluster. Either click on the Add Nodes option on the right or go to Infrastructure menu to add more discovered nodes. We see three more nodes under Discovered tab, adding them to the cluster. This process will take some time and wait for all the nodes to be part of the cluster and healthy before proceeding ahead. Now with the six nodes configured and healthy we will go ahead and install Global Data Platform from the Services menu. You would see the status of the Global Data Platform installation on the user interface. Wait for it to be healthy. When the Global Data Platform is healthy we can go ahead and configure storage. We can either use Configure Now option seen on this page or use Global Data Platform on the menu. We are now configuring Global Data Platform storage with all defaults. Wait for the storage to be configured and become healthy. In the background checking if all the Global Data Platform related pods are running and fine. Now Global Data Platform is configured and ready to use for stateful applications. Now let's deploy sample workload, creating persistent volume claim of 1 GB to the default GDP storage class. See the PVC is bound. Now we are deploying sample busy box stateful application using the PVC we just created. Now we see application is successfully running fine consuming storage from the global data platform. Hosted control plane is supported only from OpenShift 4.14 release so we are upgrading our cluster. Now we are upgrading our IBM Storage Fusion HCI cluster from 4.12 to 4.14 OpenShift version. Following the official documentation let us first upgrade to 4.13 OpenShift version. First we will acknowledge the API removals and then set the channel to stable 4.13 OpenShift version. Now we would see stable 4.13 OpenShift channel set let us go and upgrade now. It would take some time for the upgrade to complete. Once the upgrade is done make sure to check if all the services are healthy. Now continuing the documentation to upgrade from OpenShift version 4.13 to 4.14 versions. First acknowledge the API removals and set the 4.14 channel. 
while recording this video stable channel was not available for 4.14 version so we have set to fast channel. Wait for the upgrade to finish and then check the cluster status and global data platform status. Now we will install and configure prerequisites needed for the hosted control plane. OpenShift Virtualization Operator Metal LB Advanced Cluster Management We will start with installing OpenShift Virtualization Operator. We will go with all the default values. Once the operator is installed and the instance is created you would see a new virtualization menu on the left. Installing Metal LB Operator Let's create Metal LB instance with default values. Now let us create IP address pool instance. As current cluster is on the private network, I am using some IP addresses from the same range. Here you have to bring your own IP addresses. Now creating L2 advertisement instance. Now we will install Advanced Cluster Management Operator. Now we will create Multi Cluster Hub instance with default values. We concluded installing all the prerequisites needed for hosted control plane. Installing advanced cluster management will also install multi-cluster engine. Let us start working with hosted clusters. Create new hosted cluster. Troubleshooting hosted cluster. Destroying hosted cluster. We are on the ACM or multi cluster view. Click on create cluster. Select Red Hat OpenShift virtualization as infrastructure provider. The creation of hosted cluster is CLI based now. Let us down and install the hosted cluster plane CLI which is a prerequisite.
Log in to the OpenShift cluster or Hub cluster or IBM Storage Fusion HCI cluster. Exploring various options available via HCP command line utility. Exploring variables needed for creating new hosted cluster. We would get right and latest image to use for the hosted cluster from the OpenShift release images. Let us go ahead and now create new hosted cluster with all these variables. We can see the hosted cluster creation is in progress on multi-cluster view on user interface. To troubleshoot or progress the, the hosted cluster status we can do multiple checks. Check for the pods in the hosted cluster namespace. Check for the persistent volume claims in the hosted cluster namespace. Check for the virtual machines in the hosted cluster namespace. Watch the events in the hosted cluster namespace. Checking all the resources again when the cluster creation is done. Logging into the hosted cluster from the console. We can see the infrastructure provider as KubeWord and the OpenShift version is the one we have given during cluster creation. There is a default storage class called KubeWord CSI infra default will be created on the hosted cluster. Accessing hosted cluster from command line. Let us use the default storage class to deploy stateful applications. Create new persistent volume claim using default cube word CSI storage class. We would see PVC also visible on the hub cluster in the hosted cluster namespace. Creating a stateful busybox application which consumes the persistent volume claim we just created. We can watch the events for the progress. Now the pod is up and running. Let us check the files we created during pod creation. Now let us destroy the hosted cluster we just created. We can do it via console or via command line. We are destroying the hosted cluster we created via command line. We could see on the console the hosted cluster is being destroyed. Once all the resources for this cluster are clean up the entry from this view will be removed. We can monitor the progress by monitoring the similar resources we have seen during cluster creation. Now the hosted cluster is destroyed and all its resources are cleaned up. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to subscribe. Like and share.